Hello everybody, welcome to Lazio Lounge. Can we say this is the beginning of year three of Lazio Lounge? First episode of the season and unfortunately again we have Alasdor McKenzie with us. I know I should have done better but this is what I get. But Alasdor have a very welcome guest. Alasdor, do you want to present him? Yeah, well, thanks for the warm welcome as always, <laughs> Vittorio. Um, yeah, this we've we've brought back one of the first guests we had on on the show, actually, an old friend of Lazio Lounge, Neil Atkinson from the Anfield Wrap, who we had on to talk about Lucas Leva all those years ago. And welcome back again, Neil. Oh, it's good to see you've gone a strength to strength, just like Lucas, to be honest with you. You and Lucas Leva, Lazio Lounge, it's all coming together nicely. Yeah, I mean, we're taking entire credit for, for <laughs> what's happened to Lucas in Rome. <laughs> We, Neil, before talking about serious matters, help me understand why Liverpool fans are so <laughs> voting for Lucas Leva in the in the poll Lazio just uh, made this season for the Player of the Year. I think it's the second year in a row that Lucas Leva won, and it's all thanks to Liverpool fans who keep voting for Leva. It's. I think it's because Lucas, like Lucas, really took to the city of Liverpool in the same way I'm sure he's taken to the city of Rome and. If you get someone who basically plays for you for 10 years, but those 10 years are from the age of 20 to the age of 30, well, that's, you know, that's your adult life. That means you sort of belong to that place. And I think Lucas and, you know, Lucas and Liverpool, whilst it it did have its ups and downs, you know, relatively early on, by the time he left Liverpool, there's a genuine fondness for him. That is actually similar to the idea if he'd have been a young player who broke through from, you know, the local area. So I do think it's, it's, I mean, it's a really interesting thing, you know, the idea of identity in this context. But I do think that Liverpool supporters do have a warmth towards Lucas, which which goes, which is deeper than just the idea he was a good servant. I think he sort of became one of our own and, and, and someone who, who fans identified with. I do wonder how long Lats are going to continue doing the fan <laughs> polls for the, for the player of the season at this rate. Yeah, now we are at the final and it's Achebe who... We we said is the player of the year. He played terrific, and Lucas Leiva. So and and already Liverpool fans had sorry tweeted sorry Lazio. Ashabi has no chance. Leiva's gonna win. <laughs> That's I mean it, it does it does it does go to show, and I think there's a bit of mischief in it. But as I say, I think you know I think the thing about about Lucas is that mm-hmm. is that there is a, you know people people do like him and and people do respect him and admire him, and and I think that that's a good thing in general. Yeah. yeah, I think Lazio fans have taken to him, in a, but I wouldn't say in the same way, but he's definitely very quickly become one of the most popular members of the squad. And yeah, I don't know, just very likable guy. Obviously not quite the same 10-year-long links, but he's getting there. Already all these talks about him getting a directorial job after he retires. And yeah, <laughs> the guy knows how to make a good impression. Um, but he's not the reason we're here today, is he? No, no, no. You, you, you want to know about a footballer? If we're all very honest, I haven't been able to see very much of at all. You want to know about Bobby Adekanye? Well, this is right. I mean, well, Vittorio, for a start, the, the first thing I would say here is that we want, we want to talk about Bobby Adekanye. And obviously, Neil, as a, a very much a Liverpool expert, is uh, someone who can shed a bit of light on his background and so on. But the problem is, we're... we're hopefully not being a bit too preemptive about this because he's more or less considered Lazio's first signing of the summer but it's not been made official yet and the problem is that Lazio already once this summer have had a player who's supposed to be signing and then goes somewhere else so we're really hoping that doesn't happen well he he has been in Rome and he was at the stadium for the Coppa Italia final uh, he tweeted pictures etc so I really think he's going to become a Lazio player and Lazio's waiting like usual the 1st of July when transfer market officially opened to make the press release announcing the player. Let's hope so. Right, but the first first question I wanted to ask you, Neil, I suppose, is that is this uh, the the news of Adekanye leaving the club? Is what what if anything has the response to that been? Obviously, he's not a player who's. I don't think he's made any senior appearances for them, has he? Um, but has there been much of a I don't know, a backlash, any sort of reaction to, to the news at all? Yeah, there are a few people who, who, who are engaged, more engaged than I am at times around the, the, the under-23s. Uh, there was a bit of a bit of a feeling that Liverpool have maybe let one get away a little bit. I mean, that's not... I think Liverpool are in a bit of a funny position at the minute, and I think it's quite 
difficult for them to bring certain types of players through. Um, Rafa Camacho, for instance, is highly thought of and thinks of himself as a wide forward. But when Liverpool have used him in, in the first team sparingly and in friendlies, he's had to play full-back to get on the pitch. And I think Adekanye found himself behind Camacho on the, on the list. He didn't get to go to the pre-season tour of the United States last season. And that led him to really rethink things the year before. Um, he'd had a, an injury hit year and at the start of that season Klopp had said you know if you perform well this year and do what we want you to do we'll look at getting you a first team berth but then he had a lot of injuries and I think that a bit of the story of his time at Liverpool has been that he's he's had a couple of injuries and as sometimes happens to exciting young players because he was deemed to be quite exciting when he signed in 2015 what then happens is they find themselves dropping down the pecking order and not quite able to to, to reassert themselves so you know I think that whilst there might be a, a few in Liverpool quarters you might see it as a lost opportunity and you know if he goes on and plays 25 games for Lazio next year or the year after and impresses then we may all be saying well Liverpool have let one get away but I think sometimes for for a younger player they do need to go and find themselves somewhere else and you know with a bit of luck Lazio will prove to be a good move for him uh, he'll get settled in he'll, he'll get some opportunities in the in, in the pre-season and hopefully he'll be able to impress you know he's a, he's a, he's a direct player uh, and he should hopefully be able to to, to trans, transmit that in uh, in Italy. I suppose one of the the the, the things the unknowns I suppose about this transfer is that he appears to be from from the research and the reading I've done about it anyway very much a wide player, like you say, quite a direct player. And given that Lazio play a three five two, there doesn't appear to be any obvious role for him there I mean do you think that he's still of an age perhaps that he given he's not been playing tons of first team football like you're saying he'll be able to be molded into a different kind of player maybe adapt into a, a striker or a number 10 kind of position or even a, as a wing back like you're saying about one of the other youth players yeah I think that's something that's going to happen to to young players more and more if they want to find opportunities they're going to have to be prepared to be able to adapt and I think that with with reference to um, to, you know, to Adekanye, he may well find him, find opportunities at Lazio, but being able to play as a wing back in an aggressive manner, I think that may well be the be be the plan that there is there for him, and I think that that might be something you'll have to you'll have to work with uh, in the short term. I um I think it's really really tricky at the minute in in certain sides to to find your way through. You know, I think that when the stakes are as high as they are and, you know, Liverpool last season got 97 points, but they got 97 points in part because they felt they had to. You know, when you feel as though you're going to play 38 games of football and all 38 of them become must win, then I think that it becomes harder and harder for for young players to to impress sufficiently. You know, Liverpool are lucky at the minute with with Trent Alexander-Arnold and and Joe Gomez. Um, There may be another one or two in Rian Brewster. Who are, who are hopefully going to be able to make a mark on the first team. But in general, I think it is, it's remarkably difficult, I'd say, for, for young players to break through there. And as I, as I say, the next part of this becomes, well, it might be better to be a fresh face somewhere else than the guy we've been seeing around the place since 2015, who we've sort of written off. And I think he's done the right thing, not signing a new deal for himself. Uh, there's some talk Liverpool were prepared to put a three-year deal on the table but then I think that at times Liverpool put deals on tables for young players to to protect the value and then send them out on loan um, in this instance he's decided that he wants to move and I think it also bodes well the idea that he wants to get settled somewhere it's worth remembering you know he's come from I think it's PSV to go to Barcelona at a young age and then he's gone from Barcelona to to, to move to Liverpool at a, at a still young age so I wouldn't you know the idea that he probably wants to be somewhere with a level of permanence for at least a period of time, I think is a very human reaction. And we have to remember our footballers are humans. So, you know, with a bit of luck, he'll be able to be able to do something. I've got one story about him where uh, I think it was last season, not the one just gone, but the one before when there was a a minor worry about how uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold fared in, in, in big games and intimidating atmospheres. They, they had Adam, uh, Adam Kanye run at him for an hour whilst the coaches shouted abuse (laughs) at Trent. Um, so as they shouted abuse at Trent over and over and over again, as Kanye was taking him on one on one, and I think that suggests that there is something there where they feel as though of, of the younger players they had, he's the one of the best direct runners, uh, one of the best at sort of taking his man on, and they wanted to use that to, to try to intimidate Alexander Arnold and and work on his mindset in those key moments a little bit. So I think there's something in there and there's something around that, but you know it'll be interesting to see how he gets on at Lazio. 
Before leaving you, Neil, what do you think about Alberto Moreno? Because he's been heaven linked with Lazio as well. I think your three at the back system would suit him down to the ground. Um, I think at times he's it was really strange watching him the last you know last half season um, when he got a, got a, got some opportunities before Robertson broke through and took his place permanently. In that at times it almost felt like he was a little bit too conservative, like he'd worked too much on his defending and he didn't want to be caught out. I think he's at his best actually when he gets to play on the front foot, and I think it, as a left wing back, I think he could have you know could have a really really good chance to. As far as I'm concerned, and when he left, you know, the Liverpool manager said he, he expected to see him back in the Spain squad, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. You know, I think he is, he's a very, very good wing back, uh, full back type. Um, at times, I think he's he's shown uh, a propensity to switch off. Uh, it may well be with growing maturity that shifts. The other thing I'd point out, and you know, it is it, it's a thing as part of football. When I was saying before, they're all human beings. Moreno was a hugely popular member of Liverpool's first team squad, um, and it's you know it sounds it can sound trite this sort of stuff, but it was interesting to see how front and centre he was in amongst the celebrations for winning the Champions League with a lot of the players. Um, and I think right the way through, he's he's gained nothing but credit behind the scenes at Liverpool for the way in which he's applied himself in training, knowing that he's not likely to get a game ahead of um, Andy Robertson. And as the season grew closer and closer to its to its end, even James Milner would get picked at left back ahead of him. But there's never been a word of complaint and there's never been a word of complaint about him. And I think he'll go somewhere, he'll go to the side that's good enough to qualify for the Champions League, as Lazio are, a side that's good enough to win silverware, as Lazio are. And I think he'll find a position somewhere playing regular football uh, for a side that that can play to his strengths a little bit, but also where he can bed in. And it wouldn't surprise me to see him. You know, I think I think Lazio are a perfect uh, sort of level of club for him for his next move. To be honest with you, and it, you know, it, it may be that it's not Lazio. It might be that it's Valencia, or it may be that it's Leon. If you see what I mean. But I do really expect him to go somewhere, uh, go somewhere where he's going to get regular game time and become an important member of a team. And I mean that both on and off the pitch, because as I say, his conduct um, and 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 the, and the, the the esteem he was held in by Jurgen Klopp. You know, Klopp wouldn't have kept him hanging around if he'd been in any way a nuisance, if he'd been in any way hard work, if he'd been in any way disruptive to that group. Klopp would have moved him on, but he didn't, and he paid significant and heartfelt tribute to him when he left. Alison, last question. Well, I mean, that was about the most comprehensive answer you could hope for. <laughs> I mean, the one, the one thing I suppose I just wanted to add on on Moreno was I, I just wanted to ask you the problem that Lazio have had occasionally with these wing back positions, which was the biggest issue last season, is that um, not all the players in the squad have been particularly defensively capable in those roles. I know that that's been a criticism that's been pointed at Moreno before in the past is that he can be more dangerous going forward than he is sensible going backwards so is that uh, a fair generalization to make about him it, it, it was but he, in the first half of the the, the 2017-18 season when he got a lot of starts he was he was relatively you know responsible on that Liverpool side and it looked like something he'd worked on i think at times we give our full back slash wing backs a hard time to be honest with you. I think we want them to be all things at all times. You know, if they're not bombing on and, and, and being dangerous, we criticize them for that. And if if goals are getting shipped elsewhere, they get criticized for that. But you know, they're always either at the scene of the crime or absolutely absent from it, if you see what I mean. And I do think it can be a bit thankless at times. And you know, listen, Moreno is prone to rushes of blood to the head. He can be rash. Uh, he has been rash at times and it has frustrated to see it and you know that is, I think that is always going to be part of his game, but you know, in general, I think that a wing back system, you know, Liverpool he was playing in a full back system, um, so defensive lapses are, are are you know likely to be there and be spotlighted even more. I think he he could suit a wing back system absolutely down to the ground. Thank you very much, Neil. Thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure to hear you again, and still, congrats for the Champions League. Thank you very much, and uh, have a, I hope you have a really good season and, and, and continue to enjoy Lucas and anyone else who comes. <laughs> We will. Thank you very much. Bye, Neil. Thanks a lot, Neil. Cheers. So, thanks very much to Neil Atkinson of the Anfield Wrap. Guys, if you're a Liverpool fan or you love the Premier League, I suggest to start following this podcast because it's great and 
especially if you support Liverpool, then it's a must. Al Alzer, let's go back to Lazio because it has been a busy week. Uh, let's start with Simone Inzaghi because last time we we talked, uh, Inzaghi was still not sure to be uh, Lazio manager. Instead, there has been the announcement. Inzaghi has also talked for the first time after winning the Coppa Italia. What was it? A month of silence. A lot of very important things. But first of all, Alizer, what's your take on Inzaghi staying with Lazio and renewing his contract? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like you say, it's been a while actually since, since our last podcast and a while since this has happened. But my immediate reaction to it was, was relief. Um, but I suppose... The, then after that just comes the the fact that you're you're back to the norm so it's nice to have that stability um obviously something else important that's happened in this time is that Iglitare has been um the, the the subject of speculation that he could be leaving the club and then he's committed his future to the club as well so i think the we can't um, take for granted how important that stability is, not not just as the coach, but actually the entire kind of structure of the club from Lotito at the top to, you know, Tare and, and Peruzzi and Inzaghi and all these guys have been working together for years and um, know exactly how each other operates. I think if you look around the league, look at what's been happening with our kind of rivals for European qualification in Serie A over this summer, that's an advantage that we're going to have next, going into the next year is that stability in the backroom is that assurance of, of what each member of the, the backroom staff can offer and what's expected of, of one another and yeah I mean all in all delighted because as I've said all along I think that I'm convinced that Inzaghi is the right man to lead Lazio forward and that he's a young coach and, and he has good things ahead of him Yes and as you were saying Of the top teams, only Napoli, Atalanta, Lazio haven't changed uh, the manager or the sport director, <laughs> which is crazy thinking that from Juventus to the others, everything have changed. And uh, uh, so this this should be a help for Lazio. Now, as always, the Mercado is going to be really important. So we have to see what happens. Inzaghi said that he had guarantees from Lotito and Tare that he will have a competitive team. Um, like the other teams, to fight for the Champions League. And then this this, this close, the Scudetto bonus, that making a lot of people talk about. What's your thought about that? Love it. Absolutely love it. I mean, there is there's no drawback to doing that. You know, all it does is kind of says we're an ambitious club. So it sends the right messages. If he goes on and actually wins a Scudetto, they're not going to care about having to hand out a bonus. Well, you know, Lotito might, knowing Lotito, but they're not really going to care about having to pay out any bonuses. And I think it, it sets the right message because it's not, it does, it's not necessarily a statement of intent. It's not an expectation or a demand on Inzaghi that the, we're saying that during this contract you're expected to be winning a Scudetto. It's just um, a statement that this club is ambitious and I suppose that is the message they were wanting to give to Inzaghi during these contractual negotiations while Inzaghi was considering his own future. A lot of that was down to the fact that he needed to be convinced that this club was going places and that he was going to be given the backing to take it to where he, he thought he could take it to. So I think it's just another sign of that, really, that uh, that this club is wanting to continue this project with Inzaghi and, and give him what he wants to, to complete these... Uh, to complete these goals. It won't be a Scudetto, but the Champions League will be a start. Um, and yeah, then the next thing is that we just have to see that similar amount of ambition in, in the Mercato. And well, we'll get on to that. <laughs> yeah, Inzaghi, by the it's just landed back to Italy after, what was it, two weeks in New York. Now, it, newspapers said that he's going to have a meeting with Taren Lotito to discuss the Mercato because... He said that that was very important for, for him to say, but unfortunately it doesn't look like the Mercato for Lazio have started really well, right? We have to talk about Wesley's situation. Uh, a lot of newspaper websites were saying that Wesley was really close to Lazio, uh, that Tare offered something around 50, 60 million euros, but Club Bruges wanted 22. And uh, 
last week the announcement that uh, Villa signed Wesley for 25 million euros, if I'm not wrong. Alice, what's your take on that? Well, it's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, it's in a way, it's not that surprising. I think whenever I see these Lazio deals um, in inverted commas where we're so heavily linked with a player for so long and they don't really um, make any progress, then alarm bells are ringing almost immediately. Um, and yeah, like you say, I mean, talking about these reports, that the same day that his move to Villa was confirmed um, in the Correra del Sport, they had a big page lead saying Wesley is close to Lazio. <laughs> and he's moments away from this move. And it goes to show what we've been saying time and again, I suppose, is that you know this the club don't really give much away. So you can't really believe an awful lot of what you read about Lazio transfers because there are not many leaks <laughs> from that club about what's really going on behind the scenes. So, um, yeah, it's it's frustrating. Is it the end of the world in terms of the player we've lost? I think only time will tell. I don't know enough about Wesley as a player to say for sure that that's the Vici Mobile I wanted, but I definitely would have been happy to have him in the squad because he fitted the profile. He was young, talented, um, obviously scoring a lot of goals, playing Champions League football. But I don't know, how do you feel about, um, you know, never mind the deal, actually not signing Wesley? Well, the thing is, obviously, it was tough to believe that Lazio would have spent all that money for a substitute of Ciro Mobile. Uh, I, I think if Lazio paid 22 million euros for Wesley, he should have started. And then the question mark was, where does Correa go then? But, yeah, it's disappointing because we all said that Lazio need a Vice Ciro Mobile. We said that Casedo played well this season, but Lazio needs something better, especially because Casedo is asking to leave. But again, you know, the problem is Wesley was at least the biggest name we were hearing because I'm not a ha happy at all if Petania comes. Yeah, he scored a lot of goals this Well, not a lot. More goals than often this season, but six was out of penalty. So he scored only six goals uh, in total without a penalty. So that's not that much. And I don't rate him that high, to be honest with you. So biggest concern is who's going to be the replacement for Chile Mobile, the one who's going to give some rest to Chile Mobile next year. Yeah, and the thing is, like like every summer, the, the players that get linked to the club, the, the range in ability is massive. You know, <laughs> you get guys like Wesley who are obviously talented and young, um, and then you get guys like this um, Adolfo Geich in, in Argentina, who you don't use, you know, the kind of wild card options. And then you get the the grizzled Serie A striker, Mattia Destro, <laughs> no thanks. Um, and then the one that keeps coming back is Andrea Patania, um, which is a player that, again, has been linked with Lazio fairly often before. But like I say, it's... I don't know if, if there is such sticking points um, of relatively small margins when it comes to transfer fees, not only for Wesley, but if you think back to Zappa Costa back in January, um, I find it hard to imagine that we're going to get our hands on Patania, that, that Latito's going to meet Spal's demands for a player like Patania unless Moja is inserted in the deal or, or something like that. So I don't know. I mean, for me, it's... We're not going to see anything happen anytime soon with this. No, and the other point is Wesley is going to Villa, who just got promoted. So he's not going to fight for the Champions League or for some trophy, but he prefer money out of, you know, the chance of winning or fighting for the Champions League, which it's always surprising for me. You know, I, I understand he wants money, but I think for a player, he wants also to win. So that's a little bit surprising for me about all that. Well, I mean, the next player we have to talk to as well, about as well is um, is Johnny, a great name at least, <laughs> um, who's again quite a strange one for me. If if you think about how much talk there's been around this Mercato, particularly around as we were just talking about Inzaghi's contract renewal, Igli Tare's um, decision to stay at the club. You're talking about, particularly with Inzaghi, the kind of giving him the commitment that you're making this into a Champions League club and giving him the tools he wants at his disposal. Johnny is just seems like a really strange um, move to me. Obviously, economically, it could be a pretty good move. It, it, 
he's unlikely to cost an awful lot, but it's another winger. And unless Inzaghi's set his mind, set his heart on a change to a 4-3-3 next season, which if you take your judgments from Instagram videos of him in restaurants in New York, he's not going to do. It's, um, it's hard to imagine how this is really helping him, that our entire start to the summer mercato is bringing in wingers, which is the basically one position in this team that Inzaghi doesn't use. Well, the the rumors are that he believes that Johnny can play in the three five two and be a very offensive uh, midfielder of uh, left midfielder, which, as you can imagine, is a little bit concerning because he needs to defend as well in a three five two, which it looks like he's not able to. But at least it would solve the problem of the, the wingers that are not able to attack and cross the ball, uh, like we saw, uh, you know, Marzuic, Romero, and so on. Uh, but, yeah, I think putting a 3-5-2 with Johnny on the winger, it's going to be a very, very offensive 3-5-2. So we're going to see how it works out. Uh, the thing is, uh, as Malaga lost, Johnny could come free to Lazio. So th- this could be the, the only positive side. Um, I think he was third for assist in, the, in La Liga this year. So uh, he's not a mysterious player, but obviously... If you think about Inzaghi 352, it's not the first player that pops, you know, in your mind. You think more Alberto Moreno than Johnny, but it looks like he's going to be the second signing, as we say, Adekanya is, is going to be the first one. But yeah, we it should have been a big summer for Lazio. It didn't start that well, right, Alistair? I, I, I was hoping for better signing for, for Lazio. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, basically essentially there's nothing really wrong with that deal if johnny is signed on a free transfer for two million or whatever it is considering like you say how prolific he was with his providing of goals and in, in a good league in la liga last season then you know that is a good economic deal it's just the fact that there's been all this talk around in zaggy's contract extension of this club of this being a bit of a turning point this summer and really kicking on and and improving the overall quality of the squad and I'm sorry but that kind of signing isn't what does that I mean it does bulk up the um the depth of the squad but then again um it's like I say someone who's going to be played out of position at best so no I mean it's it could end up being a good deal um but it's not one that's going to have us kind of getting particularly excited <laughs> I'd say no, absolutely. And then there is this surprise. I mean, Lazio, that is close to sell Pedro Neto, Bruno Jordao to Benfica, that came out in the last couple of days. I thought it was a joke, but then there is a quote uh, of Iglitare talking to a Portuguese journal, say that uh, we are talking about that. Uh, we are not close to reach a deal, but we are talking, we are uh, thinking about that. Well, really, Benfica asked us to, to sell those players. We won't... Uh, looking for selling those players, but uh, this could go down as a deal, and Alistair, I really don't understand it. Lazio is going to make like 2 million euros out of it, uh, more than the, they paid for the players. They're very young. Uh, I, I thought they should have stayed with Lazio, go on loan to prove themselves. Instead, selling them now doesn't make no sense for me. No. Um, I suppose the whole thing is kind of shrouded in this... George Mendes cloud as well and you kind of wonder what was the point all along because obviously highly rated players finally given a bit of a chance this season not much of a chance but Jordao started the final game of the season against Torino we saw Neto off the bench a couple of times but um, and first of all I'm quite surprised that Benfica are willing to pay that amount of money if they are um, and secondly yeah I just I, I don't see why why this has happened. You know, I don't really see who's benefited from this. The players haven't, the club hasn't. Um, and unless Inzaghi's just written them off as not being good enough, in which case, fair enough, it's a lot of money. Um, yeah, it's, it's a strange one to me, especially given the hype when they first arrived. It would be a strange one to not even give them a proper shot. And like you say, even a, even a loan option. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And to add to this... Benfica is willing to offer a five-year contract to Neto with a buyout clause of 100 million euros. So this makes you see how 
they really believe in these players if all these rumors are true. And but on the other um, side, I, I never saw Lotito selling a player f- so cheap. You know, normally Lotito makes a lot of money in selling players. Let's like think about Felipe Anderson, Kate, and so on. Neto and Jordao only two million euros out of them. That it's not Lotito style. Well, that's why I kind of question what this relationship with Mendes is all about. It's strange. I don't really think Wallace would have been at the club probably for as long as he has if he weren't a Mendes client. And now we're talking about replacing him with another Mendes client from Bra- Braga yeah. in, in Viana. So um, I don't know if that's Wallace Mark II or not. I know next to nothing about the guy. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's that's why I, I find the whole thing a bit strange. I mean, I I can't help but believe there there's another story going on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, also the the one thing I would add to what you said is that if there's one one club that have an eye for a young player, it's Benfica. So if they're coming in and looking at Neto and doing what you say they're doing, then that's a sign for Lazio that we've got a player on our hands. Um, so, yeah, it would be a shame to let him go. It would be even more of a shame to see him then go and become the next the next big thing in Portugal. Yeah, absolutely, especially for that price. It really doesn't make sense at all. And I'm really surprised. I thought it was the classic rumours, you know, with no nothing real. In, instead, it looks like... And, yeah, I'm astonished because every time they play, especially Pedro Neto, you can see he had talent. And now if Benfica is willing to invest that money and put that buyout clause, it's, you know... Iglitari should be really thinking and Lutido as well. Well, maybe it's not worth it. I don't know if, you know, the rumors that a lot of people are saying is that this was the deal with uh, with uh, George Mendes. You know, they they are on loan for Lazio for two years and then I'm gonna place them somewhere else. But you know, this put Lazio in a bad shade. You know, Lazio it's like uh, a team of Mendes where he can place players and take them away whenever he wants. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that's that's kind of my point. It's it does feel strange. It doesn't ever really feel like they've been. Well, you know, I mean, they they weren't integrated for a long time, and only with quite um. Yeah, I mean, they, the times they were integrated was only really as a last resort, anyway. Um, yeah, it's it's been a strange situation and a bit of a disappointing ending, but. I mean, it's not happened yet, but then again, Iglitare has basically told people that it is happening. So, um, yeah, it would be a shame. But, um, you know, there are other young players um, who we can give a chance to. And I suppose we've just talked about one in Adekanye. Maybe that's his role as, as being the next, being the, the nettle replacement. Who knows? The other strange situation that happened is Stefan Rado, because uh, there have been rumors that. Rado asked to leave the club. Basically, what happened is uh, Inzaghi said that Rado won't be the starter next year. And so the club said, look, you're not going to be the starter next year. If you're fine, we want to keep you here. But uh, if you don't want, you're free to go. And Rado said that he wanted to play uh, in another club because he wanted to start. He wasn't feeling that he was so old to be on the bench. And so these rumors pop out. And then this morning... Uh, Rado on a Romanian website, we don't know if it's real or fake, said that he never said that. He wants to stay forever with Lazio. So, again, big confusion in the club. And we were hoping a lot of things this summer, but not this type of things with the Lazio fighting with Rado. Exactly, yeah. And that's that's the frustrating thing. Is it's been, it was otherwise such a positive start to this summer where you've got the, the, the coach committing to a long-term contract and um, and the sporting director committing and suddenly things are looking up and people are saying all the right things and um, you start to get a bit of wind in your sails and believe a bit and then things like that happen and it's it always struck me as odd. I mean, Radu has always generally, when he's asked about it in public, spoken of his desire to basically finish up at Lazio. He's not really shown any interest in going anywhere else. Uh, yes, he's had a few injury problems this th- season and a few bad games, but don't forget that as recently as last season was probably his best for Lazio. I mean, it seems utterly ridiculous, to be honest, to, to let him go. It doesn't seem like there's any real benefit to it. He's not, um, uh, you know, he's not a mega bucks earner in this squad. Um, he's obviously a, a good 
characters have in the dressing room, one of the leaders in the squads, someone who's really been there and done it all before. Um, and on top of that, he's, he's a versatile player as well. And yeah, it would, in my opinion, be be a bit bizarre to lose him. Um, if, if this was going to happen to, to any of the kind of senators, I suppose, I, I, I would have actually probably thought that this had happened to Lulic before it would happen to Radu. But um, there you go. Yeah, and he's only one year older than, than Asherbi, so he's not that old. Yeah, as you were saying, he didn't play that much this year. Uh, not as well as last season, but I think it's normal. Uh, you have to think that maybe Nzagi wants to bring someone younger in in, uh, in that position. We saw Bastos playing there. There is even Felipe Ramos who can play there. But I still think that Rado could be very useful for the team. So I hope he stays. And again, it's this is the problem with the... With the communication at Lazio. Lazio Lazio should have made a statement to contest these rumors and said they didn't do nothing so you know this just alimented these rumors and created bigger 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 yeah and uh, there's nothing wrong with um, you know competition for place I think it was Stefano Mauri who came out today and basically said that the Radu he knows would be happy to fight for his place in the team and that you know I have to agree with that the Radu that we've all seen is is a fighter is a warrior on the pitch and is a guy who you wouldn't expect would be one who kicks up a fuss if he's if he's not being picked and he has been playing a lot of football but even at his age you would have thought he wouldn't be necessarily kicking up a fuss if he's um, being rotated in and out of the team instead of playing 55 games a season or whatever it is so yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, bringing in new defenders. We need new defenders, but um, I think if we're going to sacrifice guys, there are others <laughs> who should be going before Radu goes. That's for sure. Yes, absolutely. Alice, let's talk about uh, Claudio Lotito because he he had an interview with Gazzetta dello Sport, and there were a lot of things interesting that he said, as usual. Uh, one thing I want to start with is. He basically said that Iglitare and Simone Inzaghi refused to go to Milan because now Lazio is a bigger, a better team than AC Milan. Yeah, well, what's the talking point here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but but this interview made a lot of mess on on the social. A lot of Milan fans, Milan journalists, complained and said this is rubbish. It's absolutely not true, and so on. But it makes you know, it's it's clear. Milan is struggling, uh, has a financial situation that it's really complicated. We're going to see what UEFA is going to do. Sport director and manager left. They haven't been sacked. They simply left because they didn't agree with the, with the plan of the coming year. So I think it's made totally sense what Lotito said. Yeah, and they've become um, an outsider in the last, what, five, six years. Milan are no longer a Scudetto contender. They're barely even ever a Champions League contender. They're a Europa League contender at best in, in what the league table's saying. I think, to be fair to Latito, he did say, um, I think he said it was on a structural level more than actually saying that uh, Lazio are miles ahead of, um, of Milan on the pitch, but talking about the fact that Lazio is a more organised club. And going back to what I said at the start of the show, that's true. You know, the same guys have been in place in the same positions and everyone knows what their jobs are and what they're doing in a way that absolutely isn't happening um, there. So, you know, I I'd, I'd, I'd think he probably did it on purpose. He doesn't mind winding people up a little bit. Um, but uh, again, I, I don't really mind that kind of thing because it's another example, I suppose, of him just wanting to set out ambitious targets and, and set out the idea of, of Lazio as a as a team that should be considered as one of the big teams in this league and one of the top four teams. And like I say, though, I mean, there's one thing saying all these things and putting Scudetto clauses in contracts. And then it's another thing if, if you're not, if you're going to have another summer of not actually backing your coach in the market, there's only cert certain amount you can really expect to happen. So, um, you know, I don't really mind that one part is a bit of harmless banter, but at the end of the, summer if he's not signed any decent players we'll probably look back on it a bit differently yeah and the other important thing that he said today was about Miliko Savic. he said if he doesn't want to stay then he can leave 
Yeah, I was surprised he was so candid about that, actually. Were you? I mean, he doesn't... um, I I don't know, he doesn't usually come out and say such explicit, I suppose, answer transfer questions quite that explicitly. But, uh, I mean, the message, I suppose, is is the right one, which is that if a player is not happy at the club, then he won't stand in their way. But um, then again, he also said... I think he was asked about the the valuation, and he said something like, well, all I'm going to say is he was midfielder of the year in Serie A last year, which (laughs) is basically um, him saying that he's going to ask for a hell of a lot of money once again. So the other thing, I suppose, is that as far as, you know, anything, any inclinations we've had, there's nothing to really suggest that Milinkovic Savic isn't happy um, at Lazio. So I think this is just something we're going to have. We're we're used to this already for the last two years. I've heard of (laughs) Savic stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, but I I think, obviously... Lotito often said that if you're not happy in the club, you can leave. Obviously, he said, usually he says, you have to bring the the, the, the team that wants to buy you. And obviously, the team has to uh, give me the money I want. And you know how difficult it is to, to find a deal with, uh, with, with Lotito. And I don't think that Miniko Savic is going to leave uh, for, a, for easy money. I mean, it's going to be a lot of money. We know Juventus is looking forward for it's trying to buy him, but... In the last week or so, uh, Paris Saint-Germain as well uh, made inquiries about the players. So, you know, it can be very interesting this summer. The most important thing, and I think you agree with me, is that if we have to sell Milinko Savic, it has been done early, not at the end of August, because then last year won't have time to replace him. Yeah, absolutely, and especially if you're talking about signing a top player as a replacement, which is one of supposedly one of the promises made to Inzaghi is if his big players leave, they'll pr- be replaced with big players rather than with up-and-coming players. I mean, there's a couple of things on that, I suppose, one of which is what they actually consider to be a big player because you can't realistically sign a player of the same level as Milinkovic Savic, but um, they're going to have to fork out a fair bit of money to get anyone near the same impact in the, on the pitch. Um, and then the other thing, I suppose, is is whether or not the interest actually comes in. Because, again, not quite to the same extent as last summer, um, when his price will have definitely been a lot higher. But still, he's a very expensive asset. And there are only a certain amount of pl- teams in in the world who can actually afford to pay a transfer fee like the one that Latito's going to ask for. And so you have to kind of go around the clubs and, and think who's going to pay that. And... At the moment, I'm finding it hard to really believe that anyone's going to get involved in a negotiation war with Lotito to try and make it happen. So, but I do I completely agree with what you say. I think if it's going to happen, it's it's much better if it happens early. But the problem is that it's it's that's not up to us. You know, that's not up to Lazio. It's all about the offers that come in. Uh, Danny Ceballos today said that he doesn't want to work with uh, Zidane Zidane anymore. He has been linked like the replacement of Miniko Savic if he leaves. Do you like the player? Yeah, he'd be great. I mean, a good goal he scored last night. <laughs> I don't know how much you enjoyed it. But, <laughs> well, we um, won at the end, so... Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've not seen an awful lot of him, but from what I have seen, he looks like a very nice player and obviously come, coming from a very prestigious club and is, is very highly rated. I, I think that, if anything, I was a bit worried to see him play so well in the under-21 Euros last night because I think if he has a really good competition there, then that's going to make it a lot harder for a club like Lazio to come in and get him. I mean, there's going to be a lot of competition for him. Well, I think uh, the price is going to be around 40 million euros. Obviously, if you sell Milinkovic for 80, you have enough money to buy him and he wants to play because this year he hardly saw the pitch with Real Madrid. So, that's why it could be an option and maybe, you know, he can be an exchange. La- Miniko Savic goes to Real Madrid and Real Mad- uh, Lazio get him and 40 million euros. You sound like the new Mino Raiola. <laughs> George Mendes. <laughs> sure. I mean, no, I mean, a player like that, though, just sorry, just to finish this off, I think a player like that is, that's a good example, actually, of... Um, someone I would consider a top player who could replace Milinkovic because I suppose it's 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 kind of it's within the ballpark, it's it's realistic, 
um, if Lotito was willing to pay it. Um, and he's obviously not at that level yet, but he's probably got the potential to get there. So that that would be the kind of profile of player I think we we should be looking for. Alistair, let's answer some of the questions of our followers. Guys, remember you can follow us on Twitter at Lazio Lounge and Facebook uh, facebook.com slash Lazio Lounge. Benami Hidrashashi, I hope I pronounced it well. We still have not reinforced on the wings. Wouldn't it make sense to get both Darmian and Zapacosta? We need them as badly as they need us. We could review the career like we did with Chiro Mobile. What's your thought about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think that they both would be good signings, either separately or together. Um, very sensible. I totally agree with what he's saying about the kind of renewing the career angle. I think that's something that Lazio have been really good at doing recently with some of the signings we've made, like uh, yeah, obviously Mobile, but then Lucas Levo we were talking about earlier on as well. So Luis Alberto being another one. Um, I think Zappa Costa and Darmian would both be hungry to come back to Serie A and prove a point to get back in the Italy team ahead of the Euros next year. Plenty of motivation on offer for them. They're not old and they're they're not going to be expensive. Um, I mean, I was reading recently that Darmian United be willing to let him go for 10 million euros. I don't know if that's really realistic, but if that is his price and the wage demands aren't too extortionate, they probably would be fairly extortionate if he's been at Old Trafford for the last few years. But you know, that's a deal that you can realistically do. So, yeah, it's all up to the club. The problem is that, you know, for Zappa Costa back in January, 15 million quid was was regarded as too much for a player like that. And I just, I still find that staggering that that's in the modern market is considered too much. So, I well, too much for Lazio. Kind of, well, exactly. So, I mean, it's then it's all about what you want, isn't it? Because you pay half that for a bargain last summer and you get a guy like Riza Dermizi who does absolutely nothing all year. So, it depends what you want. You you have to pay more money to get the quality. And if he's if Lotito's realistic about wanting to improve the quality of the squad, make it a Champions League team, then yeah, absolutely. Those are the kind of players we should be going for. And um, I think as well as the the whole renewing people's careers thing I, I don't know about you but it seems like a sensible line of business for me for Lazio to, for Lazio to go down is finding these players who are entering the final years of their contracts and that's automatically a way of lure, lowering the price and nowadays there are so many clubs with pretty good squads who are just have this log jam of talented players who are no longer getting in the team so um, it seems like something that we should take advantage of a bit more Yeah, I think the biggest question is, do they want to come to Lazio? Because if they do, they would push the club and I think Lazio will find a deal. Honestly, I think Darmian would be easier to get for Lazio than Zapacosta. We know Chelsea is asking a lot of money and I don't think both Lotito and Tare are rating Zapacosta that money. While Darmian, as you were saying, would be cheaper. And so it's something more easier for Lazio. I don't think both will, Lazio would be able to sign both. I think Lazio would choose between one of them. And that's why I think that Darmian would be an easy option. Uh, we didn't talk about Lazzari, but he can be another option for the wingers for Lazio. Uh, we know that Spal is willing to take Murgia. There's uh, rumors today that uh, Spal would be looking even for Palombi. So, you know, sending those two players uh, to Ferrara would help Lazio lower the, the price of Lazzari. So that could be another option that we have to consider. Then Maseyev. Is asking about what happened with Chiro Mobile, Alistair. I don't know if you read. There have been rumors from Spain about a new betting scandal, and the name of Chiro Mobile came out. Uh, so, how bad is it for you? Well, from what I've read, it doesn't appear to be too bad. Obviously, it's an ongoing investigation, and and more might come out. But when I first heard. The way it was first described to me was far more hysteric than the actual story I read, which was essentially that um, in this investigation, the two guys that are being investigated in a phone call that was recorded, Immobile's name came up in the context not of any sort of match fixing, but of having been a, a client of um, an illegal bookie. So he, he had at worst... From what I've seen, he's been placing bets on matches, um, which he shouldn't be doing. But 
then again, th- th- there was so little information in the story about Immobile's involvement, and the one thing it made very clear was that there wasn't any suspicion of match fixing or anything on his part. So I don't think that's something we need to get too worried about from what I've from what I've read. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there's nothing to be concerned, especially now at the moment. It's it's really too early to. But Immobile was really really upset about that. So uh, we're gonna see what happened. Alizer, as usual, thank you again for joining me. And let's remember to our fans that you can follow us on Patreon. We just update our tier, so you start from two dollars to be a supporter. Five dollars, you get a shout out when you sign and your name in the description. Ten dollars, you get all of this plus a weekly exclusive video that we're gonna publish on Patreon. So if you want to support our podcast you can do it on patreon patreon.com slash lazio lounge and go to our shop because we updated our shirts there are some that are really nice that just came out so again if you want to support us and help us and look cool go and see our shirts Mm -hmm. because i think we did a good job and obviously follow us on our social account so twitter it's lazio underscore lounge and on facebook is facebook.com slash lazio lounge alizer as usual thank you again and we're gonna talk maybe after the first Lazio signing. Well, let's hope so, whenever that is. So never again. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, thank you very much.